Welcome and good evening. Welcome to the New Haven Unified School District State of the District Celebration. My name is Scott Zani, and I currently serve as the district's chief academic officer. Tonight's event is a celebration of the progress that has been made in implementing the district's goals and action initiatives and to provide an overview of the next steps that we're planning to take in each of our district goals and action initiatives in 2021-2022. Tonight, as we continue to be mindful of our COVID guidance and safety protocols, we are live streaming this event from the Performing Arts Center at James Logan High School. This event is also being recorded to ensure that all of our stakeholders and community members have access to tonight's presentation. Before getting started, under the direction of Chris Carrasco and Dr. Adam Wilkie, we would like to thank the students and staff of the James Logan High School Percussion Ensemble for kicking off tonight's event. Under the leadership and guidance of our superintendent, Dr. John Thompson, each member of our district's executive cabinet supports the implementation of our district's goals and action initiatives. As chief academic officer, I support district goal number one, college career and life readiness through teaching and learning, and goal number two, equity access and achievement. Jared McNamara, chief, sorry, chief personnel officer, supports district goal number three, effective employee relations and a collaborative district culture. Dr. John Thompson, our superintendent, supports district goal number four, community outreach, engagement, and advocacy. And Annette Helping, Chief Business Officer, supports District Goal number five, effective resource management and operational sustainability. In the audience this evening are the members of the New Haven Unified School District Board of Education. Student Board Representative Kalani Calderon, <laughs> Trustee Lance Nishigira, Trustee Linda Canalis, Trustee Michael Gonzalez, Trustee and Board Clerk Nell Schwinn Mallory. And at this time, we'd like to call to the podium Trustee and Board President Sarah G. Carr Chima. Good evening. On behalf of the New Haven Unified School District Board of Education, I would like to thank everyone who is watching for helping to make this school year get off to a good start. We know that there have been many challenges and the school board trustees really appreciate your patience, cooperation, and efforts to get our students back in school. At the beginning of the 2019-20 school year, the Board of Education started the process of developing a new strategic plan. This plan was adopted by the Board of Education in December of 2019. Little did we know when we adopted this plan that our world would be turned upside down. Just a few months later, when we closed our schools in March 2020, one of the concerns we had at the time was that the strategic, strategic plan we adopted would no longer be relevant. Thankfully, that was not the case. Even though our schools were closed and students were learning remotely, we managed to accomplish a lot last year. You will hear more about this when Superintendent Thompson provides a look back at the 2020-21 school year, which was the first year of our strategic plan. Dr. Thompson will also give you a preview of what we hope to accomplish as we begin the second year of our strategic plan. We are looking forward to the year ahead and to supporting our students staff and families. Thank you.
Our State of the District celebration is a public reflection of the progress that has been made in advancing our five Board of Education goals and action initiatives, and provides an overview of what we're planning to take on in 2021-2022. At this time, we'd like to call on our Superintendent, Dr. John Thompson, to present information related to the state of our district. Thank you, Mr. Pizzani. So, um, as you have heard, the purpose of tonight's event is to take a look back and to take a moment in time to look back at what we accomplished last year and also to look ahead and to the year ahead of us. Uh, before we start, though, I'd like to take a minute to recognize where we are as a district. It, we put so much time and energy into reopening our schools and to doing whatever we can do to make sure that they're as safe as they can be and our staff has the support that they need that it'd be really easy to forget about the strategic plan. Uh, we haven't forgotten about where we're at. I know a lot of you might be wondering where the district is now, if anything related to the pandemic and what we're doing. We will have an update at our next board meeting. That's Tuesday, September 14th. And, oops. There we go. And so you'll, if you're tuning in for that information, tune in next week uh, for an update on where we're at in terms of the pandemic and, and all of that. Tonight is really about taking a moment, again, to appreciate what we've done and, and recognize what we've accomplished in year one of the strategic plan, and then to look forward into what we're hoping to accomplish in year two. Uh, before we go, though, everything we have done so far and accomplished is directly because of the people in our system. And so I'd like to thank a few folks out there that have really helped not only help us achieve our goals, but help keep the district moving. And that starts with our families. I want to thank you for your support and your, your belief in us and your trust in us through all of last year. Students, that goes for you too in terms of your perseverance. And both the, our families and our students enabled us to achieve what we did last year. Our staff deserves a very special thanks. Our staff was tasked in the first year of our strategic plan with not only trying to pivot to distance learning and provide a great education for all of our students, the best it could be under the circumstances, but they were still charged with implementing and moving our strategic plan forward. So uh, the work that we were able to accomplish is directly because of our staff members. And when we're talking about staff, we're really, we, we have to talk about our labor partners. And throughout the first year of our strategic plan, we collaborated and with our, our, our different employee groups. Uh, we brainstormed together, we came up, we identified problems before they became problems, and we moved the district forward with our strategic plan because of that collaboration. So I would like to thank NHTA, Mr. Joe Angeles, CSEA, Ms. Robin Hernandez, and our administrative group, NHA and, and Ms. Thorner, for your collaboration and your support. It's what enabled us to get everything that we got done was in large part because of those collaborations, so thank you. And then um, I'd like to spend a, just a second to thank our school board. Our school board approved the strategic plan. Our school board is made the decisions around helping us move forward. And most importantly for, for me as, as in charge with implementing it, our school board stood behind staff and our school sites and really helped drive the plan forward throughout the pandemic, and it wasn't easy. So thank you, school board, for your support. Okay, let's talk about where we're at in the cycle for those, in, just as a quick review. Uh, we are in year, we just finished year one of our strategic plan, and, and I would call that the foundational year of the plan where the work that we accomplished last year is really setting the basis or the foundation for year two and year three. And you'll see what that looks like coming up. We are entering year two, where if you're using the house metaphor, we are going to be building the, the putting up the walls and, and, the, and the roof and really starting to develop the programs that we started last year and uh, start to implement those programs as well. So that's. We are right at this transition point between year one and year two. So um, when we talk about looking back, it's really difficult to cover everything that we accomplished in a, in a, in a slide deck and a, a, a short presentation. 
what we've done is we have produced a, a district update. Uh, this update will be available in, in written form at all of our school sites, and it will also be a digital copy of it's available on our website as well. So if you want to know more of what we've done, you can dig into this plan and it gives you a, a, a deeper summary. Tonight we're just going to touch on some of the main things that we accomplished last year and then get into what we're hoping to, to move forward in this year. All right. So as you heard uh, from Mr. Pisani, we have five goals. And let's jump right into what we were able to do to address these goals last year. Last year, I call goal one our teaching and learning goal. And then there's three action initiatives that go along with that. And in, in summary, what we're trying to do is create a personalized uh, education for our students that has the full integration of our, all the resources, tech and otherwise, embedded in them. And then in the third bullet, making sure that we're keeping track and assessing our students in a way that helps us identify where we're, we're succeeding, finding gaps where, we're, where we can improve, and then doing it in a way that really helps move the district forward. So those are our three action initiatives. And for year one of our strategic plan, a lot of that focus was about creating new programs. We created, last year was the first year of our Personalized Learning Academy, our PLA. It was the first year we had a Mandarin Dual Immersion Program. It was the first year we had college pathways with Ohlone and Chabot to help our kids access that education. And as you know, we held, a, a, for the first time in a while, a full TK through 12 robust summer school program. And we did all of that, and all of that happened even though we were in distance learning and it, it, with all the challenges that went along with that. As far as systems go, we implemented a lot. We had to, as far as you saw in our, in our third action initiative assessment, well, we had to rethink assessment. We had to redo assessment. We had to come up with new techniques and ways of doing that. We implemented new programs uh, that enabled uh, better integration of instruction, of uh, uh, assignments, and better access in one place for parents, students, and teachers, and that's Canvas and Seesaw. And then, of course, you can see some of the other programs that are out there that you're familiar with. We all know Zoom a little too well. But last year, one of the things that you might not have uh, 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 hit people's attention is we uh, went through the process of choosing a new student information system and also a new technological tool that we'll talk about coming up and those are our interactive whiteboards so we'll talk about that that's going to come more in year two and then definitely uh, moving ahead into year three one of the things that you'll see in, in what we've done is there was a lot of professional development we you know we know we can't implement things without providing support and training and even in a remote environment in fact i would say that even more importantly in a remote environment these that professional development was something that was critically important and that we tried to really focus on so those are the main areas in goal one that we we accomplished let's talk about goal two moving forward uh, this is our our equity access and achievement goal and Shift down and we have like the goal one, we have three action initiatives. First one is more is trying to identify areas in our system that we can improve on to make our educational system more inclusive and equitable. Uh, second part is about trying to provide support systems for students. So no matter where you're coming from and accessing our system, there's a support structure in place that'll help pick you up and get you where you need to go. And then the third thing that we focused on are focusing on is trying to make sure that we're coordinating and integrating our services into a comprehensive way so that our families and our students uh, can get the access they need without having it be with a challenge to access those things. So um, we last year started with in terms of our programs some of the we either were enhancing programs that were here or uh, adding new programs and you can see some of them above all of these the first three are about providing better access for our students to our educational environment last year we also the ed services team put together a family support portal because in the remote world that be, that kind of support structure also became necessary so those are these are all targeted areas that we focused on and uh, it laid foundational work for last year in terms of systems, we one big move we made, and most of you are, are might be some of you might be aware of this, some of you might not, is we made the move to fully integrate our student services with our family services and our Union City Family Center. 
who had, and those three types of services had been operating somewhat separately before. We moved them all under one structure, one support structure, all on the Barnard White campus, so that we created what I'd call a one-stop shop environment for support for our families. So you don't have to go, you don't need to wonder where to go. You go there, whatever's there, you can access. And we also have, on that same site now, our adult education program and our alternative programs. So in one campus, the Barnard White campus, the, you can go and access whatever you need. So that was a big move, and, and we spent time, quite a bit of time getting that up and running. Uh, we also started to take a deeper dive looking at our systems and our processes to look at root causes of, of air, in areas that might be, uh, might provide roadblocks or hurdles for our students in, when it, and families when it comes to accessing our educational environment. And uh, we took steps to make our equity policy operational. And that first step in that process was coming up with an administrative regulation that essentially lays out the marching orders for how we make that policy workable. And we got that in place last year. We also implemented last year, uh, we have family service assistants that were available at all of our sites to make sure that if you needed a little more personal touch at each of our sites, even though it was remotely, we have that service assistance available as well. And then the MTSS work that's related again to our, our tiered systems of support that we had in place. So all of this work was uh, done or added to in year one of our strategic plan. And of course, again, professional development. And the, uh, there was equity training that was done with our administrative team and then training for some of our, our programs that provide better access to our, uh, our, for our students. Uh, professional development on that as well. Goal three uh, is our, what I call our employee goal. And we wanted to make our, make, make our work with employees and our uh, focus on making them feel valued and engaged in an intentional goal. And that's in year one, uh, was we, that last year was our first year, really making that an intentional focus. And we had, again, three action initiatives. Uh, trying to improve communication, trying to improve collaboration, and then obviously wellness is something that is always important, perhaps never import, more important than last year. So our efforts in year one focused on these three areas. Um, one of the things we saw early on, and those of you that live in the Zoom world like we all did, we all know that it can be very isolating. So we tried to better communicate with our staff. We sent weekly staff updates, health advisories, we created advisory councils with our different employee groups so that we could work together to make sure that we're staying ahead of any issues our employees have. As far as engagement goes, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out, and in, in collaboration with our, our labor groups, trying to figure out how best to support particularly the teaching and learning going on during that time and ended up uh, engaging a lot of our teachers to help teach teachers and provide support. We have TOSAs, we had people that were charged with uh, helping teachers with the technology, the technology demands at the site level and spent a fair amount of time trying to find ways to support our, our particularly, like I said, our teachers who were right, right in the middle of, of trying to navigate the distance learning waters last year. So that was a big focus last year. And then the wellness side. Uh, we, obviously everything from COVID testing to wellness support structures uh, that, that we spent, uh, tried, again, to provide as much of the support as we could last year during some, uh, some pretty challenging times, but had quite a few successes in this area as well. So um, goal four is about our families and trying to make them feel in, engaged and, uh, and, and partners with us in their students' educational experience. So again, three action initiatives here. And there are the big, one of the big challenges, and we spend a lot of time working on, is trying to make sure that our communication systems are all integrated and aligned together. That's the action initiative one. Coming up with a consistent, uh, a, a, a consistent communication um, and messaging program where we're sending out clear communications in a consistent way that also reflects who we are and what we value as an organization, and then providing our, our community and our families with the best customer service that we can. So those are the three action initiatives that go with goal four. So what do we do? Um, a big move last year was the formation of the digital services department. 
And this was kind of a repurposing of different services that we had under one umbrella, so that we, and all of our, our communication efforts moving forward will be housed under this department, so there's recs, instead of having them fractured in different places, they'll be aligned within this department. Um, we went through the process of looking at our websites, one of the key vehicles for student information. Right now they're all, it, it, every site has their own different website. So we began the process of looking at that and transitioning to something different. We also selected a new student information system, which is one of the vehicles that students and, and families and teachers access student information. So communication, uh, was also something that even though we were working on aligning our systems, we didn't want to wait around uh, to, for that work to be done. So we, again, like with our, our, our staff, wanted to make sure that we were providing regular updates, usually weekly, and started better using our social media uh, options to engage with our, our community. And we had multiple opportunities for families as well to provide us with feedback, and that was really appreciated. So we also began the process in August of last year of starting to look at our, our logo and how we communicate and, 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 and the messaging that goes along with it. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So uh, a lot of work at Goal 4 last year shifted from things such as uh, where with the goals that we, what we were originally thinking our work might look like to something as simple as, wow, okay, we need to provide all of our families with food when they are not at school. Um, and then how do we provide our families with support at home when they're with their children? And so we came up with a variety of different supports for that. Everything from live synchronous events where families could tune in to a whole uh, a, a variety of other uh, communication and, and, and vehicles and opportunities for families as well. So that, a lot of work went into that as well and a lot of that was housed in the student and family services too. So a lot of the work that we do is, is done and if people out in the community, students, staff, might not even realize that it's been accomplished. Because in a lot of ways, when things are running super smoothly, you don't notice, right? It's kind of like driving down the road and if it's perfectly paved, you don't think about the fact that the road's perfectly paved. You don't notice it until you hit a pothole. Well, we have a couple examples of work that was accomplished last year that are very visible. And last year we went through a, a a process to pick and select a logo that better reflects our values and our, our beliefs as a district. And that work, this was a, this, what you see on the screen right now are the new logos that were selected by the board in August. And they reflect a year's worth of engagement work and a process to go through and select this logo. So that's a visible example of some of the work that was done related to goal four. Goal five. So this is our budget and, and technology and uh, facility goal, if you were going to label it that way. And uh, again, three action initiatives that go along with this goal, focused on aligning systems with our, uh, with our priorities, and that means aligning the budget, aligning the LCAP, and a, bu a bunch of other vehicles, along with how we operate as a system to the strategic plan, to focusing on safety and creating learning environments that will carry our students into the future, and then to stay, making sure that moving forward with our budget, it's stable and sustainable. So as far as the work we did last year goes, we did quite a bit. The, our, we are now fully aligned across our, all of our different parts of our system and in terms of the fiscal side with our strategic plan. We have identified areas where we are, were deficit spending before the pandemic hit, and that we're also looking at a variety of different ways that we can generate revenue in our district without having to rely on the state. It's really interesting. If you take a look at where we were in March or February of 2019 and what our budget picture looked like then, and then the pandemic hitting, everything has been, has been thrown off. But at the end of the day, once the pandemic is gone, we know that we have areas in our budget that we need to continue to address and to make sure that we're, we're operating sustainably and in a cost-effective way. So that work hasn't stopped, even though everything uh, really, as we all know, uh, got thrown on its head uh, when the pandemic hit. So safety, we, safety is extremely important for us. And we spent time last year upgrading some of our facilities. We put in new fencing. 
at James Logan High School and IBCMS where there were significant gaps in the interior, exterior. We redid uh, some of the exterior locks at Logan to make sure that uh, they, those, are, those areas are secure. Uh, the a faith, a facility safety assessment was completed and that will be coming to the board soon, uh, October I believe. And then also we learned uh, that you can't have, you can't count on electricity being there all the time and powering your schools. Uh, we've learned that with the PSBS shutdown. So we have, uh, there, we will be installing generators to help keep the core functions of the district going when the power goes out. So one of the other area, other work that was done this way too is we have a facilities master plan that's been completed. Again, I believe that will be coming to the board in October. And we also had a committee review the use of our facilities to see if we can come up with ways and, and identify areas where we might be able to better use our facilities to generate some revenue for our, st our, our students and our, and our schools. We also completed a, ver a variety of number, a number of different projects. Cyril, IBCMS, CCMS, Logan and Pioneer all had new Measure M projects that were completed. So we're, we're very, those are visible examples of work that was done. It started before the strategic plan, but was completed during the first year of our strategic plan as well. All right, so that takes us to year two. So again, if you want a deeper look back at what year one, what we accomplished in year one, you can go to our, our yearly report that will again be online and available at our schools. So if, if year one was the foundational year, year two is really about using that foundation to create new opportunities. And that's been the theme for our year so far, creating new opportunities for excellence. So this, I'm gonna give you a quick preview uh, to close things out of our, what we're hoping to accomplish this year, what we're looking forward to as we move forward. So as I mentioned before, one of the key areas is taking the programs that we put in place last year and really focused on and continuing to provide them with more robust support, more professional development, more resources to make sure that they're, they're continuing to grow and move forward and develop. And then we're also expanding programs this year. Last year was the first year of our manner and dual immersion program. This year we start another grade and Spanish has been in play. We've had that for a number of years. We're adding another grade. We're moving our universal uh, design for learning forward to the middle schools. We're looking at in, uh, increasing our uh, moving, uh, upgrading the science materials that we use in elementary schools uh, this year as well. Expanding our college pathways to include new options for our students for the Loney and Chabot. And then one of my disappointments from last year going into this year is last year the board approved the purchase of interactive whiteboards which have the ability to change and uh, significantly how teachers can teach and students can learn in our classrooms. And we had everything online to be here to start the year, that was the plan. But due to a global shipping backlog that is pretty significant, they are not here yet, but they will be here. And in this fall, in the fall, hopefully starting as early as September, I think we even have some of them in now. Um, but that, even though they, they weren't here at the beginning of the year, this will be a big focus to get them in our classrooms and have our, our teachers and students able to, to use them. As far as goal two goes, we're going to be doing a lot here too. So again, last year we put some of the core pieces in place to help us move our equity work forward. This year, it's really about operating our equity policy. And we have, that begins with something as structurally simple as, as reestablishing our site-based equity councils. It has, we selected a, a professional development group, Ketzel, that is helping us develop and take a look at our systems and our structures to identify areas that are not equitable for our students so we can fix them. They're gonna help us ideally, if all goes as planned, have an end of the year progress report for the district on how we're doing and how we're going about achieving our equity goals based on data and based on input from our site equity councils. Um, so we're, that, there's a lot of work we're gonna be doing in this area that, to really make sure that we're not just saying that we want our students to have equitable outcomes and equal access to our programs. We're living it, we're breathing it, and we're, we're be able to determine if we're making progress or not. So the other side of that is we are continuing to look at some of the systems that we put in place, like UDL, 
our MTSS work, and I'm sorry, I'm speaking in acronyms again, but it's all spelled out here. This is the work that I highlighted in year one, but also piloting some professional development for staff, and we're doing that at Chavez Middle School to see how that works to train our staff to, uh, in making sure that we are doing whatever we can do in the classrooms as well to provide our students with equitable access to our, our learning processes. And then also, as you know, uh, the board approved last spring a uh, mental health and wellness support plan. And so implementing that and getting that going, we have uh, wellness centers at all of our school sites uh, and making sure that those are available and accessible and, and running for our students. They're up and running, and so continuing to support that this year as well. Goal three, a lot of this work will be housed in the personnel department where they're gonna be going through an audit of their different programs and systems and realigning some of them with, to make sure that they're meeting our priorities as a district. Um, and then the support piece is again huge where we're both on the celebratory side where we're hoping to bring back and enhance some of our recognition activities to celebrate the accomplishments of our employees, but also giving them the support. We have health and wellness, resources available at the sites, and then we also are going to be implementing this year our employee assistance program. So that's, uh, that'll be a big, big focus of uh, moving goal three work forward this year. So goal four is an area where, again, this is our communication and outreach and engagement goal, and I'm hoping by the end of this year there will be some very visible changes in what we're doing and how, we're, uh, how we are communicating and engaging our families. We're, we're hopefully, by the end of this year, we'll be transitioning to a, uh, a new website ecosystem that where they're all integrated and combined into one uniform system as opposed to having them all in different, different places. Uh, we have, we'll be transitioning and doing the work to transition to our new student information system, which will hopefully make those resources available and more accessible for our students, families, and staff. Uh, our digital services department is up and running, but really expanding that and developing that to make it fully uh, a, a department where we can house all of our efforts in communication, engagement, and technological resources all into one uh, department. That'll be a, a focus moving forward that way as well. Um, how our communication protocols, and so, hey, we can check that one off the list. We already, we earlier this year selected the new logo, so that's one that was work that we were on this year, so that is great. And then, uh, again, we're talking about aligning and, and creating consistency in the resources that are listed there. When we do that, uh, we will be able to better outreach and engage our community and com better communicate in a more effective and efficient way with our families, our students, and our staff. So that is huge, and there's a lot of work going on uh, that has happened and will continue to work that way. And then again, as far as support and engagement go, I, I'd like to again mention that we do have health and wellness resources for all of our families uh, and at our sites to help with that as well. All right, our last goal, but not least. So this is a, this will be another, uh, well, they're big years in all, it's gonna be a big year in all of the world here in this. But uh, one of the things that we'll be doing is hopefully uh, transitioning our central kitchen over to Logan uh, we, and better utilizing that facility, renting it out and generating uh, revenue for our district. We also have some areas that we've identified where we have been deficit spending and we're trying to address those. And also exploring and continuing to explore how we can better use our facilities uh, for revenue, revenue uh, generation. But the less we have to rely on the state, for funding, the better off we are, and we have some, some, we think some options that can help with that. So that work will continue. Um, we're going to focus on getting more efficient in some of the things that we're doing, and also moving the safety report and our facilities master plan forward, and strategizing on how to address the areas in there from uh, that are identified. Everything from looking at camera systems in our at our high school and potentially our middle schools and then looking at some of the areas of need that have been identified in our district and figuring out the best way to address those. So uh, we also have new projects that are slated to be moved forward through Measure M and such as work that are work at Alvarado, Kitayama, and Emmanuel, um, some work at our middle schools. So there's a, quite a bit of work to do this year and we're excited about it for goal five. So, um, 
it's great to have plans and it's great to have goals. And you know, if you don't spend a few minutes or some time developing your plans to move forward, then you're not, you may end up in a place you don't want to be. That said, we don't know what's going to happen this year. And this will be another year of uncertainty as we move through the different phases of the pandemic. But we've learned over the last year and a half that we will do whatever it takes to adapt our plans, modify them, and we will move forward and accomplish not only whatever we need to do to keep our students in school and safe, but also to move our plan forward in year two of our strategic plan. So that is our update for tonight. A uh, quick look at what we've done, a quick look at what's coming up, and I want to thank all of you for watching and thank all of you for your support. So I hope you have a good night. Thank you.